theater and TV. You're listening to iCannabisRadio.com. All right. Welcome to the Hemp Connoisseur Radio Show. we got a great show for you today. Um, we have Summer Haskey. She's the co-founder and COO of Enviro Textiles. They are a global hemp textile manufacturer. Uh, Summer's mother, uh, Barbara, has been traveling the world developing uh, the hemp fabric you see in today's market. Uh, their global headquarters are located uh, right here in Glenwood Springs, Colorado. So they are local. And you know that we at the Hemp Connoisseur love to uh, promote uh, locally, especially any Colorado business. Uh, Summer, you're on with us right now? Hello, David. How Hello, are I'm you? I'm good, thank you. Thanks for joining us today. And uh, you also have another friend that you wanted to bring along. You want to uh, introduce him to us? Absolutely. Um, I'm very excited to be able to introduce David Pillar, who has been a pillar in our hemp industry with uh, outreach and around education and awareness, and has recently put together the first ever Hemp History Week college tour that will be kicking off here in Colorado. So say hello, David. Hey, everybody. <laughs> and I do want to share something also about David that's very special to me, because when I met David many years ago, um, over the phone, I wasn't aware that he had such a special gift and is actually legally deaf. So we're lucky that uh, advanced technologies have made it possible for him to hear us with uh, special aid and communicate with us. And uh, a few years back, was even privileged enough to be in Washington, D.C. when he happened to create the sign language sign for hemp that had never been created before. So you created the sign language sign for hemp, and I know it's going to be hard to visually picture this, but I really want to know what the actual sign language sign is for hemp. Okay, well, are you by any chance familiar with the sign for love in sign language? Uh, I am not, are you? Chris? Okay, well, the sign for love is if you take your hand, you put them in a fist, and then you go across your chest, like to your shoulders, uh, and you kind of make a neck in front of you. Sure. Okay, so you have that, but instead of fist, uh, both your hands are showing uh, the sign for the letter H. And the letter H is almost like you're making a gun with your hand and your finger, like pointing two fingers, but your thumb is in. Does that make sense? So kind of like, I don't know if you can see me. You that on down the... across your chest on both sides, and uh, that's the sign for him. Okay. Well, very cool. Thank you for sharing that. I, now I know the sign for hemp. Thank you, David. Um, you know, before we start talking, I, I do have to do a quick thing. We're giving away two tickets. Um, and I'm sorry, I didn't mention this to you earlier, Summer, when we were going to get on. We're giving away two tickets to the Landmark Theater and DTC's Pot Roast. Um, which is going to be this Wednesday, February 27th at 7.30. We're giving, the, we're giving two tickets away tonight to the first t um, two uh, listeners who go and like uh, iCannabis Radio and the Hemp Connoisseur Magazine on Facebook and comment on both of our um, sites. And it, all you have to do is comment that you've been listening to the radio show and that you want to get your free tickets to the pot roast. Please give us your name so we can contact you, and we'll give those tickets away. And a little bit of info about tonight's show. So you do have to tell us that you were listening and mention who our guests were and uh, a little bit about both of our guests. So you got to pay attention and then, get, and then send us a comment in. All right. Now back to business. Um, so, Summer, um, you guys have been working with hemp for a very long time. How long has EnviroTextiles been around? Well, EnviroTextiles just celebrated last week our 12 years in business located here in Colorado. So we're very, uh, very happy to say that this business has been around this long and we've been back at home. Uh, all our prior companies, my mother's been in the hemp industry for over 30 years. So we've had quite a variety of past hemp companies before Enviro Textiles and all of those the headquarters was based on either coast, whether it be in you know Washington D.C. or Washington State. Um, and so, when we formed Enviro Textiles, it was really important to both my mom and I that we were able to come back home and really be where we want to be. Now, where do you um, get your hemp from to to make your textiles? Do you get it from Canada, China, Europe? Well, you know, if you look at the global positioning of hemp today, um, many of you all know that hemp has been used around the world 
since the beginning of how far we can go back to date. Mm. But uh, today, you look at the positioning, and Eastern Europe is known for more ropes twines and cordages um, as far as textile development it was much harder to create a standardized collection that we could mainstream to really get out there to make that environmental difference mm-hmm. um, at that time is actually when mom realized we need to go to the textile masters and bring our developments to china where we had state-of-the-art facilities so mm-hmm. china of course is known for textiles sure. um, kind of always has and always will be with those state-of-the-art uh you know, multi-million dollar facilities giving us the capabilities we didn't have before. Um, When you look at Canada in the last 15 years since they've legalized, Mm -hmm. the past seven, they have put their place on the map for hemp seed oil. Um, So that hemp seed oil is really going to food and body care products. Um, Right now, Northern Europe, the UK area, is um, really making some huge achievements towards hemp composites and building materials. materials, There's actually hemp concrete called hempcrete Mm -hmm. that's based out of the UK. Um, And then we've also got places like Australia who have been using industrial hemp forever and ever, but are really kind of paving the way for more of the petroleum products. They're doing everything from CD cases to Tupperware. Really? See, now that was something I wasn't aware of. I didn't know Australia was kind of on the hemp map, so that's good to know. So, so now with the advent of 64 passing, we obviously all know how big of a deal that is for the hemp industry and especially for someone such as yourself in Colorado. What kind of impact do you foresee for your business um, if we start uh, mass producing hemp in Colorado? Well, you know, there's two issues around that because I, I talk to people every day here in our state and something that um, really needs to be talked about and clear for everyone is just because we did vote 64 in and our industrial hemp was written into the back of that uh, proposition, you know, once that passed, our congressman sat down and said, you know, we really want to look at these two topics as, as such, you know, we're going to put in separate rules, regs, and guidelines for both the recreational cannabis and the industrial hemp. Now, December 5th came along and Hickenlooper gave us the the sign off on that recreational. Um, Obviously, they're still putting in all the the guidelines and how it's all going to play out and work. Um, But as far as the industrial side, we have not yet been given any kind of um, okays to go on. Now, we have been given one date so far. That date is June of 2014. Um, But then we have had some things come up. Since that announcement, um, for example, last month there was an article in the Washington Post um, that that had a few um, comments from the representative of uh, the Department of Agriculture basically stating that um, if we do go forth in Colorado or any of these states that have gone forth on a statewide level, um, that the federal judgment will step in and they have threatened our farmers by saying um, any farmer who thinks they're going to go forth with planting hemp, if you happen to also grow other crops that may be subsidized, mm-hmm. the federal government is going to take the subsidies from you for five years. Wow. Now they're even threatening the farmers to go forth when this is something the farmers are in desperate need of. So, you know, let's look past that. Let's stay positive. We have been pushing for this for a very long time. And, you know, we're getting really close, everybody. But we've got a really big push that we need to make right now. Um, And that is, you know, staying focused on not only what's going on on your statewide levels, but really getting involved in the uh, federal level, which we are lucky to announce as of two weeks ago, um, both Senator Wyde, uh, Paul Wydell, Markley, and McConnell introduced the S-359, which is a bipartisan Senate companion bill to the H.R. 525, which is the Industrial Hemp Farming Act bill that is a Senate bill. So everybody, if we can pass the Senate bill, we just went coast to coast. Forget the state by state and fighting and fighting and putting all this energy in to finally get to where we have enough of us standing together. 
let's move this forward as a whole and do it now Mm -hmm. um, so that we really can see the progression in each of our states to have hemp for industry and jobs and healthy products again. Well, and I think that's a really good point you make, Summer. And I think a a lot of things, people are not aware, you know, Senator Mitch McConnell is, you know, he's the Senate minority leader. Um, You know, he's very conservative. And for him to come out in favor of hemp Mm -hmm. because he wants, you know, hemp production in his state of Kansas, I mean, that's a really big deal. And that shows, uh, to me, a big shift going on um, in Congress where both sides of the fence are looking at hemp and going, okay, maybe we need to reassess our opinions of this. So I think it's a really positive movement that you're talking about with this S-359. Um, and, you know, it's very encouraging, but obviously, like you said, we we can't just slow down. We need to keep pushing this issue and making sure everybody's behind this. Yeah, and, you know, and that really does show um, that, you know, it's, it's walk of every type of life we have, you know, when we can stand up and say, hey, you know, when was the last time that a Senate bill was introduced that had two Democratic and two Republican backers? Mm -hmm. You know, that is huge all on its own. And it really is covering, you know, um, a, a pretty wide span of the community of our country. So, you know, we, we definitely are seeing more progress um, than we have in, in my 20 years of being involved in the industry. And, of course, um, many of my peers for even longer kind of talking about the same thing. <laughs> you know, it's like, how long are we going to have to um, try to educate people on a topic that is a global issue here. You know, when I, I uh, see interviews and I talk to people that say, oh, you know, there is no difference from the industrial versus the recreational. And it's like, you know, when, when people are going to make that statement that only makes us look very naive to yeah. the rest of the world that has been utilizing it and the advantages. It, it is one of those things that seems like sometimes in the United States that we're not very good at nuances and no. and recognizing the you know the specific difference between you know recreational marijuana or medical marijuana and industrial hemp. And that's one of the things I know I have to do on a regular basis in, in what we do with the magazine is educate people on the fact that they are completely different. It's trying it's like trying to compare a Chihuahua to a Great Dane and saying they're the same exact dog. They're not. You know, really? you know, so um, I, I'm sure that you have to answer that question often. Um, we do have to you go. Know, to- I'll actually share with all of you mm-hmm. the best analogy when that topic comes up, because it does. It comes up for all of us mm-hmm. all the time. And it's all about um, education and awareness, no matter which end of this industry you're sitting on. Sure. And, you know, that's something, of course, I've dealt with my whole life. It's, oh, can we smoke your shirt, you know, yeah, and yeah, the devil's yeah. kind of everything. Um, and the best way to really kind of clear that up for people when you're in a discussion is explaining the difference between a bell pepper and a chili pepper. Mm. You know, they're cousin plants. They're from the same species, but one's hot and one's not. Yeah. No, that's definitely a good way to look at it. I like that analogy. Um, you know, we actually have to go on a break. Um, and uh, as soon as we come back from the break, we'll, we'll continue with Summer. And we need to get David. We need to get you into this conversation as well. And I want to hear everything you've been working on as well. Um, so thanks for listening to the Hemp Connoisseur Radio. We'll be back in just a moment. The Chocolatiers at Incredibles are dedicated to crafting the finest chocolate from high-quality ingredients to ensure the greatest possible medicated edibles in the world. Consistency and quality are top priority. Lab testing on each and every batch. Rick and Josh have been making non-medicated chocolates for years for such retail outlets as Whole Foods and Vitamin Cottage. Today, we are focused on crafting our award-winning medicated incredible chocolate bars. We are professional bakers, and we believe food should be made from scratch. We get Guarantee your satisfaction. Have an incredible day. Ivita Wellness is committed to compassionate patient care while providing the highest quality medicine at an affordable price. At Ivita Wellness, patients can get top shelf ounces for $150 every day. Ivita Wellness also carries pharmaceutical grade pure CO2 oil. Ivita Wellness is located in Uptown Denver on 1616 Pearl Street. Open seven days a week from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. You can reach us at 303 303- Nine five two nine one five zero, or our website at www.ivitawellness.com. 
Ivita Wellness is Denver's Compassionate Care Center. The law offices of Vets and Maintenance Mats provide criminal defense, medical marijuana defense, and advice about setting up and running medical marijuana centers, optional premises, cultivation operations, and infused product manufacturing businesses throughout Colorado. With offices in Denver and Aspen, we can offer assistance throughout the entire state of Colorado. Give us a call at 303-831-8188. That's 303-831-8188. Or visit us online at warrenetson.com. I'm Gary Johnson, and you're listening to iCannabis Radio, and I want to say, talk it up, Colorado. All right, we are back. Thanks for listening to Hemp Connoisseur Radio. We have Summer Haskey, co-founder and CEO of Enviro Textiles, and then David Piller, who has been working with uh, Dr. Bronner Soaps and is going to be doing a national college tour for Hemp History Week. Um, so... Um, Summer and David, we just finished talking about a little bit, a bit about you know the cha- the difference between hemp and cannabis. I mean marijuana, and what comes up there. Uh, I wanted to ask you, Summer, did you guys start Enviro Textiles with hemp in mind, or was it something that you kind of discovered as a viable textile? I mean, do you work you work with other textiles besides hemp? I believe, right? We do, but you know, um, like I mentioned, my mother had many previous companies uh, before Enviro Textiles that sole focus was the industrial hemp. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, for example, many of you know who uh, Steve D'Angelo is with mm-hmm. Harborside Medical. He's been uh, quite the uh, face for the other side of the push. And yes. what many people don't know about CBD is that he was actually one of the first pioneers in the hemp industry and had headhunted my mother oh so many years ago and sent her to the mountains of Transylvania, Romania after a revolution to rebuild factories and make hemp into something that was usable. Wow. Um, Yeah. I did not know that. (laughs) We've got quite the, quite the stories in history um, that will maybe one day come out in a book or something. People keep trying to tell me to write one, but um, so, you know, the, the initial career before that was as a apparel designer. And as a designer, designers are so into their fabrics mm-hmm. that when she was contracted out to do that collection and, and finally got her hands on it and was able to work with it, she went, somebody has to do something with this fabric. This is the answer to so many of the problems out there. And um, so her focus really went, to industrial hemp and like I said making a, a collection that could actually mainstream mm-hmm. and that's so important because without being able to mainstream and get it out to the masses how do you make that environmental difference sure um, so over the years of focusing on the hemp came other natural fiber development and with Enviro Textiles we launched solely focused on industrial hemp filling in the gaps for the markets on things that were missing offering finished products for small companies that couldn't meet the minimums or the quality control to do so for their own brands. Um, and, and over the years, we found out, oh, wow, Enviro Textiles was a really great name for us to choose because, you know, it, it isn't just hemp anymore. Sure. There's so many other biodiverse crops that have their position in this sustainable circle of things. Well, so, sure. There's some like, um, stuff like what, bamboo? Or... And hemp. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, it always I always found it amazing that like bamboo could be made into a shirt. It just seems yeah, well, that's a whole other topic. <laughs> it's a, I know that's a whole other topic, but it's just one of those things. I'm like, wow, it's such an interesting product to turn into. Well, fabric. you know, it's important for people to understand too that plant fibers, um, you know, the base of that material. So when we're actually using a plant, no matter if it's hemp or flax, jute, rami, bamboo, nettles. I mean, there's so many out there. Mm-hmm. But what's important is that there's a lot of times where a product could be on a market saying, hey, it's made out of this, when really just the base was. So, for example, um, you know, Bamboo recently had a new labeling requirement where they have to state whether it is viscose bamboo. And if you see that on the label, it's important to know that viscose actually represents the term for a synthetic process. Uh, So what this means is they're taking a natural fiber and turning it into synthetic. So the only natural part of it was actually the bamboo in the beginning. And the best way to describe that is when you're looking at a true natural fiber, 
that should literally be like the hairs of the fibers that are spun together to make that yarn that then makes your fabric. Mm -hmm. And with uh, this post, for example, they're putting it in a big vat with tons of chemicals, some of the worst we could name, Mm -hmm. and spinning them out the other end like fishing lines. Uh It's one long continuous strand. So, you know, it's important to be a conscious consumer and know what you're looking for, um, you know, possibly know the company's uh, integrity and morals behind their product and who you're supporting. But, you know, when you get to experience and, and know what to look for, you can get to the point where you can walk into a store and feel anything and know if it's a natural fiber or if it's been put through a synthetic process. Sure. Now, how, how extensive is the process to take a hemp fiber and turn it into a textile? You know, it's um, back in the day in the U.S., it was quite the process because, of course, everything was done by hand sure. and old mechanical machines. And, you know, obviously these days we have machines to do all those stages. So basically what happens is, um, so, for example, our main collection that we stock here in the U.S. these days is, of course, made in China. Now, depending on the blend of that fiber uh, fabric, for example, something that could be 55% hemp and 45% certified organic cotton. We only source our organic cotton fiber out of Turkey. So that cotton's coming from Turkey to China to then be blended. But the hemp itself is grown by co-op farmers throughout the whole countryside of China. And these farmers have been growing the hemp with or without our business, you know, they actually utilize the hemp as a companion planting method where they integrate it between their other crops mm-hmm. to use the hemp as a natural herbicide and pesticide for the other crops. So with this hemp movement becoming, you know, in more demand, it's only given our farmers more way of life. So they harvest it down, they come bring it in, Um, And again, it's a big co-op, so it's not like we get a ton of hemp from one particular farmer. It's thousands of farmers bringing in their harvest. We then take the stock to the mill, and we have to, um, it it actually goes through a process where it has to dry. It's typically dried when we get the stock. Then it needs to get wet again. And in that process, that's what allows the ribbon, which is that outer shell of the stock Mm -hmm. to be peeled and separated from the core of the stock easier, that drying and wetting process. So once we have the the ribbon, then it's literally going through what's called combing. So it goes through these machines with wire combs, and those combs are separating out the different staple lengths of fiber. So our 100% hemp always use the longest hemp fiber where the shorter fibers are going to blend, Mm. to blend evenly because, and this is really interesting, and this will also help everyone explain when people say, well, why is hemp so much more durable than other natural fibers like Mm. cotton? When you look at a cotton fiber, the length of it is anywhere from a half inch to two inches. Okay. okay. Hemp is eight to eighteen inches. Oh wow. Okay. So when you think about those fibers spinning together to make that yarn, you've got so many more spins and twists mm-hmm. per inch going for inches down the line mm-hmm. with a long fiber to hold it together and create that durability than you do this little short fiber. So of course, with our blends, we have to use our shorter hemp fibers, and sometimes we even have to chop them down a little bit shorter to help them blend evenly with the other content that's wow. going to go in. Um, so once it's, you know, it's been combed, then we've got our fibers separated out, and that's where we either start blending them or spinning the yarns. And, and that's where we can really decipher what we're going to make out of this yarn. Are we going to take this one single yarn and add three more to ply it and make it a thicker yarn for our heavy canvases? Or are we going to keep it a single and, and create some real nice sheer, you know, t-shirt material out of it? Um, and so once it goes through weaving or knitting, um, it then goes through a hydrogen peroxide semi-bleach. All fabrics go through a semi-bleach, especially natural fibers, because, you know, we're talking plants, you guys. So if we have a different uh, weather pattern one year to the next, that can change the fiber color. 
You know, if we have um, anything environmentally, it's going to change the natural color of the fiber that comes from that plant. And again, mainstream and keep it consistent. We implemented regulations saying we won't allow chlorine bleach in our facilities. So we're using hydrogen peroxide to then semi-bleach it. um, And then it goes through a wash and then it comes here. And so once it comes here, it all depends on what the customer needs to do to it to create their finished product. Sure, sure. Well, thank you. I mean, I really appreciate you actually going through that process. I know I've heard it before, but I know a lot of our listeners have not. And I think that's something that a lot of people want to know. So I thank you so much for relaying that somewhere. I really appreciate it. Um, uh, David, you've been so nice and being so quiet this whole time. I'd love to um, hear more about what you've been working on. Now, you work with... um, Dr. Bronner Soaps, which I've actually uh, touted the benefits of uh, many times in this radio show. And then also, I'm really excited about what you're doing with this, uh, with the college tour. So uh, how did you get into this uh, industry? Oh, boy. Well, that story begins actually 22 years ago when I was a student at the University of Arizona. Mm -hmm. And that's when I uh, first got introduced to hemp. And, uh, over the years, I've had hundreds, if not thousands of conversations with friends and people I run into about the topic, and it's just uh, been a progressive process to put me in the position I have come to be in, uh, being out there on the road, sharing hemp, sharing experiences and knowledge about this plant with uh, people from a lot of walks of life. That's great. Now, how, how did this concept of the college tours come about? Well, the college tour has actually been a dream of mine for a number of years. Um, when I look at the hemp movement and see its place in U.S. history and so forth, I can't help but think of some of the, the big movements of the past that it has required a groundswell of support mm-hmm. to help change federal policy. Sure. Um, whether you're talking about the Civil Rights Act, the uh, Women's Right to Vote, Endangered Species Act, et cetera, the environmental movement, you know, those movements started in a lot of different places, but they took off on college campuses. Mm-hmm. And so with that in mind, I, you know, had this dream of going out to college campuses and making students aware of hemp, its role in world history, its role in U.S. history, and, and that includes the future, too, um, and that, that was the, the vision behind putting this tour together to try to get students engaged in the, in the issue so that we can build that ground flow of support faster. And the, the main focus of the tour as far as colleges I'm visiting is I'm, I've made it a point to pick out universities with a strong agriculture college because I really believe that it is the farmers' sons and daughters who are going to be instrumental in really taking the hemp movement to the next level and showing that there's a groundswell of support all across this country for bringing the crop back and opening up the opportunities for jobs, farmers, et cetera. Well, I, I think it's great. How many colleges do you have planned on the tour? Or is that still developing? Um, well, right now our sites are set on upwards of 30 schools. Wow. Um, we don't have a lot of days off. It's a uh, two-month tour uh, starting in Colorado, as summer said, and we're going to be going from there across the Midwest down into Texas, uh, New Mexico, Arizona, and all the way up the West Coast from California to Washington. Wow. Now, is there a place that somebody can go find out um, a list of where all the places you're going to be visiting and the schedule? Uh, well, people that are on Facebook can type in Hemp History Week College Roadshow. And we have an event listing on the page. It's, it's dated for March 6th because that's our kickoff. But that's where they can find a listing of the schools that we have, and we will be continuing to update the information and share it uh, in good format for people to see and share. Okay. I'm just going to read. There's also links to that Facebook if you go to hemphistoryweek.com as well. Um, That way you can go directly to 
the Hemp History Week site, see what Hemp History Week's all about and get involved there, but also um, link to the information for the college tour location. Right. And, and we'll, we'll put links on iCannabis Radio and on the Hemp Connoisseur um, Facebook pages as well to make sure that we can direct as many people to that as possible. Um, well, fantastic. Thanks so much. Oh, absolutely. I mean, anything to support what you're doing, David, I really appreciate it. And um, I mean, it's great work that you're doing, and, and I'm very excited to hear about the feedback. Um, I would definitely want to have you back on the radio show after you're done with the tour, even in, you know, in the middle, midst of the tour, um, to kind of find out how it's going. Um, Wonderful. Thank yeah. you so much. Oh, yeah. It's my and pleasure. You, you know, one thing I just wanted to add, you were asking me a little bit about how I came to be in this position and uh, what enabled me to put this, um, tour together and get the backing and support of Dr. Braun of Nature's Path and other companies is the experience I had uh, putting together an educational exhibit called the Hemp Hut, the which Hemp Hut? I created in partnership with the Sustainable Living Roadshow. Mm. And part of my motivation behind creating the exhibit, which I will be taking with me on the road, is knowing that people needed to have concrete experiences with a wide variety of hemp products to really come to understand better and appreciate um, what we can do with this when we bring it back. Sure, sure. Well, I think that's what it is, is people need to see um, that, you know, I think the common misconception of hemp out there was like it's this hip, hippie product and everyone has these rope band bracelets and, and things like that. And, and, you know, it's one of the things I try to tout to, you know, my staff in the magazine is that you got to think of hemp as hip, not hippie. And, um, and teaching people like you are that it's something that can be integrated into their everyday life and, you know, create far superior products for things that they're using every day is, I think, the way to impact, you know, the everyday American to understand what hemp can mean for them and for our economy here. So, um, yeah, once again, I just want to say I really appreciate everything you're doing. And, uh, you know, it's people like you that are out there spreading the word on hemp that are really helping push this movement forward, both you and Summer. Um, now, we do have to go to another quick break and do a little pause for the cause, and I'll be right back with both of you guys. Um, so thanks again for listening to the Hemp Connoisseur Radio. We'll be back in just a couple minutes. Are you a runner? Are you a runner who supports marijuana legalization? Run on Grass is a group of athletes actively seeking to change our marijuana laws. We speak the truth about cannabis, bringing the message through our feet to new ears. Check out runongrass.com to find out more about us, our events, and how to join up or how to sponsor a runner. If you're in the Denver area, please join us for runs or start a group in your area. Running not your thing? Any sport can do it on Grass. Runongrass.com. Let's face it, rules and regulations are complicated, especially in the field of medical marijuana. Let Medical Marijuana 101 help you get through the compliance process. We can also explain to you your employment requirements, your employees, and your business. But our work doesn't stop there. Our experience in cultivation ranges from the design of grow rooms to the diagnosis and resolution of grow problems. Visit us at www.medicalmarijuana101.com or call 303-388-7706. That's 303-388-7706. All right, we're back with the Hemp Connoisseur Radio. A uh, quick reminder to all the listeners out there, we are giving away two free tickets to uh, the Landmark Theater's Pot Roast. There is a great lineup of comedians on this. It's Wednesday, February 27th at 7.30 at the Landmark and DTC. They said it's an 18 and plus show. We're giving away two free tickets to the first um, listeners who comment on either the iCannabis Facebook page or the Hemp Connoisseur Facebook page. Mention uh, who our guests are today and uh, a little bit about them so I know you've been listening and uh, that you want tickets to the pot roast. So first two listeners to do that, you get two free tickets to the pot roast. Um, So we're back with uh, David Piller and Summer Haskey. Um, So where's the first school, David, that you're going to be visiting, just so I can get that one out there? Oh, yeah. Well, the first school is actually CU in Boulder. CU and Boulder. That's going awesome. to be on Wednesday, March 6th. We are kicking off the tour with three dates 
based in uh, Colorado, so I'm happy to say that following Wednesday the 6th, on Thursday the 7th, we'll be at Colorado State University in Fort Collins, and Friday we will be following up in University of Northern Colorado in Greeley. So now what can people expect uh, to see? Are, are you, is it going to be more of like a lecture series, or is it going to be a lot of presentations going on? Well, it's actually a pretty unique setup that we're doing on the tour. Uh, we're reaching out and basically looking to do the biggest type of outreach we can on these campuses. On some of them, it may only be possible for us to uh, share information about the campaign in like a high traffic area. Um, but we are also looking to do uh, presentations in classes, presentations to group uh, events. And so we're just uh, reaching out to student groups and faculty members at all these schools, letting them know what we're doing and uh, asking them to, to get involved and help us pull something off special out there. Awesome. Awesome. Are you looking for volunteers to help you out? I'm sorry. What's that are you, you going to be looking for volunteers to help you out in all the cities as well? I'm sure we will be looking for volunteers. All right. Everybody out there listening, if you want to volunteer... Um, check out uh, David's Facebook page. It's Hemp History Week College Roadshow. Um, again, there's a link for that on the Hemp History Week Facebook page as well, or on their website, exactly. I should say. And um, if people want to email me directly, they're free to send an email to okay. campusoutreach at hemphistoryweek.com. Campusoutreach so campus at hemphistoryweek.com. Yep. Awesome. And I do just want to remind everybody, too, this is the first year for this college tour. So from here on out, it's only going to get bigger and greater and more colleges. And we're mm -hmm. hoping, you know, by next year or the following, it's going to be going coast to coast and hitting every campus possible. So anybody and everybody that wants to get involved or see it come to their school in the future, please reach out to Hemp History Week and share that support. Now, now, Summer, you've been really active in the. Both of you have been very active in the in the hemp movement for what twenty years now, right? Um, uh, now, what have you seen as a change? Have you seen a growth in the movement, or do you feel like? I mean, because a lot of people like have been noticing hemp now in Colorado because of the advent of sixty four, and I think a lot of people think that like you know, sometimes that hemp is going to become this overnight success of a crop because of that. But you guys have been doing this work for a very long time just to get to this point. And yeah. so what was it like in the beginning? I mean, what, what, did you see a lot more backlash uh, on, uh, you know, from, mm -hmm. from people when you were sharing about hemp as opposed to now? I mean, are you seeing more acceptance? Absolutely. Um, you know, I have to kind of look back on the past and chuckle now, and I'm glad I'm to the point where I can, mm -hmm. because, you know, in the early days, there were uh, many times where, um, for example, I would I would hit an industry trade show that had never even heard of hemp, trying to introduce it to brands and companies and urge them to put something hemp in their line. And I'd get the jokes and laughed mm -hmm. at or just totally get snubbed by people not wanting to even go there. You know, they heard the word hemp and they turned around and ran. Mm -hmm. um, so there was many times where, you know, I was the, the kid going, OK, well, not only am I this young age and I'm not getting, you know, a lot of credibility, but then mm -hmm. I'm walking and talking about something that's so controversial um, on top of just not having a uh, any kind of knowledge about it. So. You know, I would say when we look back 20 years, okay, back then in the U.S., all we had were when you referred to, you know, the hippie wear and the itchy, scratchy stuff, mm -hmm. um, that was kind of where it was at. I mean, my mother had created some of those first collections that brought it to the next level, but a lot of people weren't aware of it, and it was kind of ahead of its time where many of those pieces never even hit the market for people to see. Sure. So. You know, um, something that comes up for me daily still is, oh, well, there's nothing my style or it's all hippie stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, that definitely gets addressed all the time. And when you say, like, we got to make it um, attractive and, and, and really hip, hip hemp out, mm -hmm. um, about 10 years ago, 
I started a hemp fashion show. Um, first one was actually at the Fashion Institute of Technology in New York, where I worked with three groups of students, design students, to create hemp looks. We did a hemp fashion show at the Introduction to Sustainable Business and Design, and I also brought in a um, high fashion designer show as well. But you know, when I look at it, the industry in a whole in the U.S., obviously the materials are what has been able to allow us to offer the more unique development. Or if you need stretch, we got it now. If you want prints, if you want bright colors, you know, there's no no boundary. But I've watched the market and our clients really take it to the next level. I mean, for years, we had a lot of bag companies doing accessories, mm-hmm. um, some apparel lines, but it was a lot of loungewear or hippie wear, whatever you want to call it. Um, where today, you know, I had actually asked our office, print me a list of our Colorado folks before I get on this show. So maybe I could like do a little spot or review on who's here in the state. And I didn't realize we're up to like, who knows how many within the state. Now I can honestly say that has definitely happened in the last two years in wow. Colorado. Wow. Um, you know, most of our, our database was everywhere else, but here. Um, and again, on the coast, California is obviously a hot spot. Sure. Um, but now we've got everyone from, you know, a cloth baby diapers. Okay. is a huge industry for us. And when it first started about six years ago, I was like, I don't know if this is going to take okay. off because, you know, you're losing a lot of the convenience. And, you know, that's something that when you're, you're introducing a new product and you have something that's so controversial like hemp, you want to be able to promote, you know, all these different aspects and, and, and really be able to promote that product without even ever saying it's hemp and all the sure. great benefits and it's more durable and it's this and that. And, you know, with diapers, I was going, oh, man, I don't know if this is going to happen. And what has happened is it's been one of the largest booms in industry is seen in the United States. And it's not only that um, new parents are becoming more conscious about what they're putting on their babies, but also, hey, you might lose a little bit of convenience, but the dollar saving in your pocket to reuse items and not have it go and be waste and thrown out after one use has equaled thousands of dollars to early parents. So now what is um, what is the advantage of, of a hemp cloth diaper as opposed to whatever other cloth? Because I understand the reasoning that you're saying behind why some parents are going to cloth diapers as opposed to disposable. I mean, first of all, your carbon footprint is pretty much reduced to nothing. Um, but also, I mean, you know, they're reusing the cloth. Is is it more beneficial to utilize the hemp as opposed to, I don't know what they use for other cloth diapers, but I'm assuming cotton or some some other fabric. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, you know, there's quite a few advantages. Obviously, um, having the higher durability to use in a product like that, where it really does get a lot of high use and a mm-hmm. lot of washing, you know, mm-hmm. you want to make sure it's going to last. Sure. Um, but not only that, you know, with the plastic diapers or even a fabric with a synthetic uh, plastic content, um, you know, remember a few years ago when they said to everybody, don't leave your water bottle in your car? Yes. And and the reason behind that was once it hits a certain temperature, that plastic's offsetting into your water mm-hmm. and then you're drinking it, right? Sure, sure. Well, we don't know what's happening when any of us are wearing a a plastic synthetic and we're out in the sun or we're hitting temperatures and we've got that directly against our skin sucking right into our pores. So they're finding, you know, that you don't have to worry about the off gassing onto your baby. That's so uh, sensitive to things. We've also got the higher performance. So it's got the, um, the absorbency and the breathability that's going to perform at the top for something like a a cloth diaper, which they've used everything from cottons to bamboos to blends, um, you name it, and the hemp has performed the top. Wow. 
Wow. Well, am- amazingly, we actually have to go to another break, my producer Chris is telling me. It seems like they're coming up really fast today. Um, maybe it's just because you, uh, you guys have so much information. And, uh, you know, I'm learning more and more about hemp fabric today than I have in a while. So I appreciate everything you're relaying to us today, Summer. Um, but we have to go on a break. We actually have a quick guest call that's going to be coming back after the break, Casey Stark, because um, uh, my... Uh, Producer Chris and I are going to be doing a live broadcast on Saturday night from Club A64 in Colorado Springs. So uh, Casey's going to just do a little plug about that. And then I want to finish talking about all the events that are coming up between you, uh, David, and Summer um, so that all of our listeners know to get involved um, in helping push hemp in Colorado and across the country. So we'll be back in just a moment. Catapunch is a delicious and effective medical marijuana beverage proudly made right here in Colorado. Each bottle is freshly infused with 100% pure flower extract from the highest grade marijuana plants available today. Using proprietary extraction methods, every bottle of Catapunch is consistently and reliably infused with an exact milligram dosage that you can count on to relieve your symptoms each and every time. Catapunch is delicious. There's never any medicine-y taste. We use only 100% cannabis flowers. No trim or byproducts are ever used in Catapunch. It does not require refrigeration and comes in convenient, resealable, multi-dose bottles. From 60 milligrams to 200 milligrams, we have drinks with dosage that works best for you. Catapunch is available in a variety of delicious flavors like black cherry, watermelon, pineapple mango, and blue raspberry. And we now have strain-specific beverages available just for you. Counterpunch is delicious, convenient, consistent, and effective. Give it a try and experience the Counterpunch difference. Independent Records and Videos has been your locally owned and operated choice for music, movies, and lifestyle accessories since 1978. Independent Records and Videos has seven locations from Denver to Colorado Springs to Pueblo to serve your entertainment needs. Whether it's vinyl, CDs, DVDs, books, smoking accessories, or hundreds of other fun and fanciful items, Independent is ready and waiting to make your dreams come true. We are always buying, selling, and trading vinyl, CDs, books, and DVDs, so sell yours and buy ours. Independent records and videos your entertainment headquarters check us out at beindependent.com or on facebook i'm gary johnson and you're listening to i cannabis radio and i want to say talk it up colorado all right we are back um chris is going to be calling uh casey in just a moment so oh, really we have to hear the beeps and everything <laughs> Well, while we're waiting for Casey to get on the line, um, Summer, uh, what uh, what things do you have in the works right now for Enviro Textiles? I know we talked before. Well, I will actually take this opportunity to announce a very, very big announcement here on yeah. the air. And actually, our press release hasn't even come out about this until oh, wow. tomorrow. So you guys are the first to hear. Nice. Um, I love exclusives. But, you know, as many of us know... Again, we can focus on our state to state, but we want to focus on this bill. Without the Senate bill going, we are still pushing. Um, and the number one thing to get the Senate bill to go forth is gaining support from the federal government. Mm-hmm. Um, we've been working very hard the last three years, getting samples in, going through testing, and we have officially uh, gained approval from the USDA new bio preferred program. So um, I'll pick that up in a minute. And yeah, it sounds it. like we're ringing into Casey right now. We'll definitely get back to that summer, though. Good afternoon. This is Casey. Casey, it's David from the Hemp Connoisseur. How are you today, buddy? You know, I am hustling. I just finished uh, putting a plasma screen holder on the wall. An hour before that, I was staying in the cold, hanging at privacy fence. So. <laughs> That's a, well, uh, you know, you're on air right now, so I want you to just tell our listeners what, you know, why you're putting in a plasma screen and putting up a privacy tent. So w- what, what are you working on? And we're going to obviously do a live show on Saturday at the location, but tell everybody about what it is. Well, what it, it's quite amazing. What we're trying to do is prove to everyone from Washington, D.C. to, you know, Silicon Valley that Colorado can – be responsible, can take this chance. And with the laws we have, I think we have about four years to prove it. Either we win it or we lose it. So it's a critical moment. And City of A64 is based on the principles of the Constitution and local zoning rules and regulations. So what we want to do is have a location that is really zoned, licensed, insured, 
sales tax is paid, run like like a very professional business, just like the marijuana centers do today. Mm-hmm. You know, they've proven it. They've proven they can do it. Sure. And that's why we had this chance. So let's make sure we don't mess it up. Let's not go gangland style. Let's do it right. Let's take care of our neighbors. Let's present a good face and just run it like a very good business and not, you know, a downstairs basement drug day. So what is Club A64? It is, to my knowledge, Colorado's and perhaps the nation's first licensed, insured, brick-and-mortar, private cannabis club with full consumption on site. Now, you how know, did... We've seen a few options out there where they kind of pop in and pop out. It's sure. more of an event sort of location. Mm-hmm. But I don't want to just hit and disappear like, you know, the Lone Ranger. Sure. I want to kind of stand loud and proud uh, like an Archangel Gabriel and scream that we have the rights in our Constitution we can do it correctly. Come, watch, see. Sure. Let us continue. So now, now, how is it going to work, Casey? If I'm if I'm a um, adult over twenty one, and uh, I want to come to Club A sixty four, what's that process going to look like for them? Well, it's quite straightforward. We do have membership agreements. It's very similar to the medical marijuana model, but it's not. So everything is new and unprived. Mm-hmm. Uh, do bear in mind, my battery is dying, uh, okay. so I will try to stay alive as long as I can. Okay. But yes, uh, we have the model presented to us already. Okay. So what we're going to do is just extend that model to the recreational market. Mm-hmm. And, you know, so you'll come in, you'll agree to our terms. We'll just have you sign that information, make sure everything's covered. Uh, we have vaporizers sponsored by the nation's leading vaporizer company, Silver Surfer, mm-hmm. made right here in Colorado Springs. Yep, they do make uh, great vaporizers. We have the, the, the hemp cannabis energy drink. Mm-hmm. So we're trying to not only, you know, just open a club and have fun, but we want to present other industry leaders in the light they deserve. You know, this is a good energy drink. This is a great vaporizer. These mm-hmm. guys are leaders. Come in, sit down, talk about business, have a lunch break, have a coffee, watch the sunset. And do it all at studioa64.com. So I, I want to make sure that our listeners are clear. They cannot purchase cannabis at Studio A64, correct? Absolutely not. We do, right. not, we do not sell or grow cannabis. They can, uh, we do not allow alcohol on site. Okay, so no uh, alcohol on site, which is I think is a great thing for this industry. Um, so what, what? it's kind of a BYOB, be, bring your own bud, so to speak. That is exactly what it is. So you, you'll, we'll, you'll sign a waiver that says you have less than an ounce. Okay. You'll sign a waiver that says you're not going to sell drugs in here. Okay. You'll sign a waiver that you know, you're not going to carry guns and you're not a cop and you're not with the, the, the press. Okay. And basically after that, you know, we have the best vaporizer on the planet sitting there on the table for you to use. We have uh, blongs that are, you know, triple percolators that if you never tried one, right. you know, you know, rent one out and have a blast. If you want to sit on our balcony, it's pretty cool. From 420 to 7, we got quite a bit of sunshine on our western front. Mm-hmm. We have a 7 by 30 foot balcony out there where people can actually, you know, have a coffee and watch the sunset over the Pikes Peak. Right. So you're providing a safe place for adults over 21 to be able to consume cannabis together in a social setting um, without any, any you know, repercussions from the law, supposedly. And that's, well, correct. That's the we hope. want to actually bring it off. To, you know, come and do it in a safe environment. You're not okay. supposed to do it in public. You're not right. supposed to do it in the sidewalk. So where do you do it? I mean, you drive home or go in the bathroom every day. Yeah. You know, come out of the closet, have a good time. But, it, you know, we, we do reserve the right to deny access. You know, if you're going to try to come up here and sell drugs at the bottom of my steps, you know, I will call the cops on you myself. Right. So, right. you know, it's really straightforward. You know, there's a game we can play. Let's all play nice. Right. You know, it could, go, it could all come crashing down. I mean, Humpty right. Dumpty fell and blew his mind. And we don't want that to happen. We hope to have the city council in here, the mayors, uh, perhaps a senator or two. Great. Because uh, they have questions about this, and we want to show them that, you know, we're not going to just jump in, take someone's money, call it a club, and disappear, which I find intellectually offensive. Great. And we've seen that. Right. So what we want to do is show that there is, this is Colorado. We've proven it. Let's, let's just take it one step further. Let's not run. Let's take a step, one step at a time. And pretty soon, in four years, the rest of the country is using us as a model. We expect to have franchise options available by October when the licensing is ready to be submitted. Mm-hmm. Um, so, uh, studioa64.com is, is charging on. And to my knowledge, we are the first licensed, insured, brick and water 
private members only cannabis club in Colorado, I'm sure, and right. in the nation, uh, possibly. Uh, awesome. So studioa64.com is your website. That is correct. And you can book online. We do only have seating. It is, it is kind of exclusive uh, mm-hmm. for about 50 people. So about 50 once we hit time. 50, that's it. Okay. I'm sorry, but good news. There's a beautiful bar with live music right underneath the club. So if we're full, go downstairs, have a local brew, watch a metal band or play the blues, and come back up in half an hour, and we should have a table for you. Awesome. Now, again, we're going to be broadcasting live on Saturday because that's your official grand opening. That is correct. Saturday the 23rd, so Chris and I will be there. Uh, Thank you so uh, much. And and Sam will be there as well. If if we don't get rated, if if, if we get rated, I want you to keep broadcasting, okay? Don't let them shut you down. All right. (laughs) Okay. Um, We we will broadcast uh, any raid that happens on Saturday. Hopefully it won't. And hopefully it'll go off without a hitch. I wish you the best of luck, and I'm looking forward to seeing you on Saturday, Casey. Thanks so much for joining us right now. Thank you for the airtime, and God bless all those people out there that support cannabis. Let's just do it right, and come on down, enjoy the sunset, have a coffee. Uh, we have a live band set up, so if you want to bring your band, we have open mic nights. Uh, we have a songwriter studio. We can do green screen and video work, so it is a, a full studio. Well, it sounds like it'll be a good audio, time. video to camera. Right on, Casey. Thanks so much, man. Appreciate it. You have a Thank good you, one, sir. and I will see you on Saturday. You got it. All right, bye. Um, <laughs> okay, well, that was Casey Stark with Studio A64. Again, the grand opening on uh, Saturday. Uh, this Saturday, the 23rd, um, you can go to studioa64.com to get more information and try to reserve a table. Okay, Summer and David, um, you, we were, you know, you were starting to talk to us about something you've been working on um, next for Envirotextile Summer, and I definitely want to get to that right now. So, oh, they disconnected on us. Oh, we're calling him again. So we'll be back in a moment with uh, Summer and David. Um, is it because we just can't have more than one? No, I don't know what happened. Uh-oh. Chris is in trouble because he messed up and hung up on Summer and David. We're going to blame Dave- Chris right now. Hello. Hi, Summer. Somehow we lost you there. I'm blaming Chris. It's my fault. Uh, it, oh, he's saying it was his fault. <laughs> yeah, so. sorry I lost you guys there. And I know we are limited to the last couple minutes, so well, I want to just spit out a few things I think are important for everybody. Please do. We can um, go over, so don't um, worry. We're on internet radio, so don't worry. Oh, awesome. Well, yeah. in that case, <laughs> in that case, we got another hour. No. <laughs> um, so we've got, um, you know, there's obviously been a lot of really great events and awareness programs happening in Colorado already. Um, mm-hmm. But we happen to have Vote Hemp and the Hemp Industry Association, which are the oldest established organizations around this topic in our nation yes. that is put together a hemp farming symposium March 21st mm-hmm. at the ranch in Loveland is the venue, the ranch in Loveland. And that's going to be from 6 PM to 9 30 PM. Um, we obviously urge all the farmers and family members of farmers that can help spread the word for those that can't be there. And anybody that is interested in hemp, we're going to have some of the uh, top experts from around the world there. Um, I'll, of course, be giving a presentation on, on our stuff, but we're going to have Sean Crew, who's the president of Hemp Oil Canada, which mm. is the largest uh, hemp processor in Canada. Andrea Herman, who's an expert agrologist in hemp farming. Um, Eric Steenstra, who's the president of Oat Hemp. And also, uh, I believe David Bronner mm. may be able to attend from Dr. Bronner's Soap. And, uh, of course, some of our senators and congressmen as well. Um, and so that gets me to how important it is for everyone to urge their senators, congressmen, any representatives. And it's so simple, people. And something that a lot of uh, folks don't realize, and I didn't learn until a few years ago, is your one letter equals hundreds or sometimes thousands in your community. So basically, when you write a letter into your representatives, um, they're figuring the area you live in and what that community's uh per capita is and basically saying, okay, your letter single-handedly equals 800 people who feel the same exact way that may be too lazy to write. Yep. So knowing your one letter is 
such an impact and represents a whole community behind you, I urge everybody, do up a letter that is a, a blank dear to blank letter that says, you know, I urge you to support these bills or this is, you know, our, we're interested in seeing your support um, and, and print out as many copies as you can and just throw the name of whoever you're sending it on and throw one out to each one of those people every week and let's bombard these people with the support um, because that's what makes the change. And same with the companies, you know, your favorite products. Start writing letters to them going, hey, I've been using your product forever. You know, why do we have to have optic white toilet paper with bleach <laughs> when right. it could be brown and be made with hemp, you know? Mm -hmm. And if they start finding out they've got enough consumer interest or the people's interest is when they're going to start making the change. So it's super easy to do. Again, you can print out a stack and then just pop it in the mail mm -hmm. and have it done where it literally takes a few minutes out of your life to yep. become a part of this whole huge picture. And, and you just have to go to your, your state government website to find out how to reach whoever it is you're trying to write this letter to as far as your local officials. So it, it's not hard to find out the information you need to do that. And I think that's an amazing point, Summer. You're right. One letter does equal a thousand votes. I, I mean, it really does. I mean, it, it makes much more of an impact than an email you know, which they just, you know, easier to click and just erase too. When they get that letter sent to them, it does make an impact, especially since less and less people are sending letters to their government. Yeah, and so let's all send it to our representatives, yep. but include one that goes to Obama too, and let's mm -hmm. have the whole nation send in Obama. Like, that would <laughs> we'll be just awesome. bombard them with it. And, and, you know, you can go onto your state sites and you can also visit VoteHemp.com mm -hmm. or TheHIA.com. Mm -hmm. And the hemp industry is always a little easier to remember if you think, hiya. Hmm. Everyone's a little higher oh, yeah. on the home topic. Yep. And so it's thehia.com um, or, of course, your, your state site. Absolutely. Absolutely. What else do you have? You said you had a lot. I mean, is well, there any... So, yeah, we have some really exciting news. Like mm -hmm. I mentioned, you guys are going to be some of the first to hear. And mm -hmm. this is really, you know, around... Um, our country as a whole, but really is going to be starting here in Colorado. So like I was mentioning before, we really want to focus on the Senate bill. Um, and then the only way to get a Senate bill to go is by gaining support from our government levels and the, the federal government. So um, we have the uh, many are familiar with the USDA. That's always been a certification deal for food, mm -hmm. organic food. Mm -hmm. Well, our government has, uh, you know, put in new programs and guidelines because they realized, hey, this needs to spread to other products, not just food, mm -hmm. you know, and it wouldn't be the same certification around foods as it would for a t-shirt or a park bench or something, you know, of a different nature. So they have created now what's called the USDA bio preferred program mm. and this is to promote the increased purchase of use of bio-based products um you know which tells us they want to see natural products and which includes our hemp and of course we're in this huge movement right now to become the staple for um the bigger picture in our country and if we can start to get government contracts obviously when we go to the Senate bill and say, hey, you guys, we have, you know, orders pending through other programs with you guys. You got to let this pass. You know, not only is that going to allow that to push forward and actually go through, but that's what's going to set off the growing of hemp for industry in our country again. So we're looking at, you know, promoting huge economic developments with creating new jobs, providing new market markets and farm commodities. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, it's really important that people check that out. It's USDA bio preferred, um, start spreading it uh, around your community with business owners so that they can get involved and register their products. Um, when you look at the certifications on the market right now, uh, something that a lot of people don't really realize is when you're asking, Oh, is it certified? That certification is only covering one piece of the whole puzzle. 
Mm-hmm. Okay. So, you know, in that certification, whoever's carrying it is paying a lot of money and it may not actually even tell that consumer with the end product if it's really the best of the best mm-hmm. or if it's better than most. Um, and something that's happened in our country is a lot of our farmers that have pioneered the way on organic farming mm-hmm. um, haven't been able to afford those certifications. So they're kind of getting left behind when they're mm-hmm. the ones that got us to where we're at. And with USDA certification, it's going to be the most cost effective way for every level to become certified and become part of this program. So everyone from the farmer growing it to the manufacturing, to the base material, to the end product developer. Um, You know, it's going to be affordable. It's through our government. We're showing that the government and us um, supporting their program really want to see our country start um, going back onto the natural path and and bringing manufacturing back to the U.S. Wow. Well, thank you so much. That's so that's a lot of information for everybody. Could you just repeat that certification again? It's the uh, USDA USDA bio preferred bio preferred. And you can go to USDA bio preferred dot gov. Okay. Awesome. USDA biopreferred.gov. And I just want to reiterate again, the Hemp Farming Symposium is on March 21st at The Ranch in Loveland, Colorado from 6.30 to 9.30 p.m. Anybody who is a hemp advocate needs to go to this. I know the hemp connoisseur will be there to report on what's going on there. Um, There's going to be, you know, a who's who in hemp industry um, at the symposium right here in Loveland. So I think it's very important that everybody go there and, uh, uh, you know, say hi to me and Go say hi to Summer and thank her for all the work she does. Um, I know I want to thank you again, Summer, for all the work you did. We didn't get hooked back up with David, but I just want to send out another thanks to David Pillar for being part of this and uh, for what he's doing with the uh, the college tour for Hemp History Week. I think that's going to be huge. Uh, you know, it's a two month college uh, campus tour going across the country, um, educating everybody and getting the uh, next generation of hemp advocates out there. Uh, Thank you so much, Summer, for joining us. Maybe you're invited to any of our Colorado events. We'd love to have you. Oh, there you are. I thought we lost you, David. Awesome. Um, Yeah, and David, thank you for all of your work and the radio and the magazine and everything you guys are doing there, too, to help spread the word. And we have a lot of exciting stuff in the works that we hope to report to you here very soon and keep everybody excited and fresh about what's happening. And, again, Everyone makes a difference. So write, 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 get involved. Um, And there are uh, a ton of things happening right here in the state. So anybody that is curious about how they can get involved, feel free to contact us at Enviro Textiles um, or through the HIA or Vote Hemp. Awesome. Thank you so much, guys, for joining us. I definitely look forward to having you both back on again on the Hemp Connoisseur Radio. We definitely want to make this a regular time to hear everything that's going on with Enviro Textiles and with the uh, the College Roadshow for Hemp History Week, David. Um, I'm just so excited about everything you guys are both doing. This was an incredibly educational show today for me, and so I, and I know it's going to be for our listeners. So uh, thanks again, guys, and uh, keep up the good work. Thank you. Thanks, David. All right. Take care. Um, so before we go, I have to just tell all of our listeners, please make sure um, that – and I don't know. We haven't checked our Facebook to see if we got comments, but we are giving away two tickets to the Pot Rose. This should be a lot of fun at the Landmark at DTC, Wednesday, February 27th. That's next Wednesday. You got nothing to do on Wednesday? Now you do. Uh, so Wednesday, the 27th at the Landmark at, at DTC at 7.30. Um, there's a ton of great comedians on there, um, and it's going to be kind of a nice little uh, – Obviously, marijuana-themed uh, comedy show. I'll be there. I know I'm going to have a good time. So uh, just comment on iCannabis' uh, Facebook page or on the Hemp Connoisseur Radio's fa- on the Hemp Connoisseur Magazine's Facebook page um, and tell us you want tickets for the pot roast. The first comments we get, you'll get your two tickets. Um, also, don't forget to listen to our other lineup of great radio shows. We have Overgrow the Radio tonight from 7 to 9. Uh, on Monday in the lab with Jennifer. That's Jennifer Murray, one of my favorite people in the industry with Can Labs. And uh, she's going to be joined with Jill Lamoureux from ABA. Um, that's uh, on Mondays. And then uh, Tuesdays from 6 to 8 is Sex Pot Radio. That is like the funniest two hours of radio right there. It's always interesting. Georgia. 
And then we have Georgia. Mondays with Georgia as well uh, at, seven to, at seven to eight. So uh, a lot of great shows. If you only listen to our radio show, you really want to tune into the other ones because these guys are doing a great job. They're all varied. Obviously, we talk about different subjects. They talk about different subjects. Um, and, uh, but all great lineup. If you haven't listened to any of the other shows, you definitely need to catch up on them because they do a great job. Really proud to be part of iCannabis Radio with the great lineup we have. Um, and uh, I think that's it. Oh, don't forget to listen to us. Uh, we're doing a live broadcast from Studio A64 in Colorado Springs on Saturday. Um, we will be on at 7 o'clock. And uh, that we'll probably be broadcasting for a couple hours that night, interviewing a lot of people there, getting a feel for it. So uh, make sure you listen in at the first um, brick-and-mortar location for a cannabis club in Colorado Springs. Um, so definitely check that out. You can check it out at StudioA64.com on their website to get all the information for it. Um, thanks again for listening to the Hemp Connoisseur Radio. Peace, love, and hempiness.